Art of Botany students. Um, I'm here in my kitchen, um, just uh, starting a tutorial for you so you know um, what to do for the, the dye project and to um, have an example for you to, um, to work from. So today, uh, so you're only required to do um, one uh, example of a dye project from uh, uh, focusing on one type of uh, plant-based dye, um, but I have two examples here that I'm going to show you, just to show you some um, different ways to approach something, and also using two very simple examples so that you can um, uh, decide what you need to do, and also know that you don't need some really complex equipment in order to accomplish this lab. Okay, so here I'm going to work with the example T, and turmeric, which is a common uh, spice in Indian and South Asian cooking. Um, so hopefully that will help um, with uh, showing you all of these uh, uh, examples um, for this particular lab. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do first is uh, I'll show you all of the materials that I've gathered together. Um, but first, let's start with safety, okay? Um, notice that I have my hair tied back. Um, I'm not, you know, fully uh, covered and my clothing isn't um, covering my full arm or anything, but I'm pretty comfortable cooking this way, but I have the majority of my torso and um, my legs covered as I'm cooking, okay? So I'm wearing a longer skirt. I also have my feet covered when I'm cooking with the stove. Also nearby, you can see I have my fire extinguisher and my safety kit. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I'll show you is the materials that I've gathered together uh, to test uh, tea and turmeric. Let me bring the examples over here that I had initially. Okay, so I have, um, I have two, uh, two pots, but of course you only need one. So one pot, um, one spoon, um, something to measure water with. Here I have a, um, a, a liter in this particular um, pitcher right here. And of course the stove. Um, on the table here I have uh, the cloth that I'm going to be dyeing. It's a cotton-based cloth called cheesecloth. Um, it's used in a lot of different arts and crafts and, of course, also to make cheese. It's a cotton-based cloth that has a quite a, um, a thin weave like this. Um, and I will be cutting that up um, into, um, into different portions um, in order to, um, to have my sample dye cloth, okay? So... Not going to need a lot of material here. Um, if that's all you have, you can use, feel free to use an old t-shirt, um, old uh, washcloth or towel, as long as they're in the, the, the same material um, and a, a single fiber type is represented. For instance, all cotton, all silk, all linen, or all synthetic. Um, if that's all you have, that's something that you can work from as long as you specify that in your results. Okay, so one thing I failed to mention is to have a tape measure in the materials, um, but you can see that's, uh, that's required here in order to measure out the material. I also have labels, um, so they're just simple mailing labels or a piece of tape or whatever you have available to label your containers that you're going to use for your dye project. And then of course... To extract some plant pigments, Okay, so for example, if you're using something like red cabbage um, or another type of plant material, um, you'll need some additional uh, equipment, which is mentioned in the procedure and materials. Um, but just to emphasize that, here's a blender. You could also use a small bullet blender if required. Um, and you'll also need probably some type of strainer because there are usually small pieces of plant material left over after you do, after you heat the plant material in the dye bath. So you want to strain those out before you actually um, 
set up your dye bath uh, to sit for 24 hours. Okay, so here are those uh, additional things that you would need. Okay, um, and so now let's turn to, um, okay, so I have the, um, the ingredients or materials that I need here um, to set up the tea dye bath and the turmeric dye bath. And so, um, so let me first uh, talk to you about the, um, the variable or the modification that I'm going to make. Okay. So, um, so here I have four, uh, envelopes of tea, which is what was required in order to do the, um, the standard procedure for the tea dye bath. And I also have some vinegar here because um, I'm using some white vinegar. Um, I've measured out a, a tablespoon, which is just sitting in this bowl here. And the reason I uh, chose to do that was because I was reading that um, when one dyes cloth with tea or using tea as a dye, black, and this is black tea, um, that vinegar, so acidification of the dye bath, can allow the vinegar to act as a fixative, okay? Um, and so what I would like to test is whether the, um, the vinegar, is whether the cloth that's dyed with tea, with the vinegar added, actually has um, uh, a better grip on the cloth, if you will. Okay, um, so, uh, you know, one of the ways that um, we can get, uh, so one of the ways that we can get the, um, the uh, dye to stick better to a cloth is to use a mordant, right? But a mordant, you need a scale to measure it out. You need to mask the cloth that you're using. And so you ha if you have those things, great. I have those at home for, for this course, um, so uh, I could prep things for you guys as needed. But maybe you don't have those things. So instead of, of focusing on a mordant, you can turn to a fixative. And so um, in the guidelines um, for using a fixative, there are several household things that can be used. Vinegar is one of them, and so is sodi sodium chloride, which is table salt. So in this case, I am going to test whether vinegar actually allows um, the, uh, the tea to sort of stick better to the, um, uh, the material that I'm going to dye, the fabric that I'm going to dye. Okay, so the other, um, the other experiment that I'm setting up is, as I mentioned before, turmeric, okay? And um, the uh, colorful compound that's actually, that makes this turmeric yellow is a compound called curcumin. And um, what I read about, um, and I've actually seen this in action before, um, what I read about was uh, curcumin actually turns from yellow to red under alkaline conditions. And I've seen that before, I've observed that before, for when I was cleaning up after cooking and soap, which is alkaline, came in contact with the turmeric, it turned red. And so um, I know that um, adding baking soda actually makes the um, solution, will make a solution more alkaline. So what I am testing here is I'm, um, I'm trying to see whether adding this tablespoon of baking soda in my, my in my experiment modification um, will turn the dye bath red um, and if it will have any effect on uh, the actual um, resulting color of the cloth okay um, and so just to quickly um, get to uh, trying to see what we are aiming for um, I have my containers here these I've uh, brought from uh, the lab at UD. Um, they're just uh, mason jars that um, were used for this project before. Um, and then I also have two containers from home. 
that um, I will use uh, for these dye baths. So we'll have these two containers um, for, um, for one of the experiments and these two containers for the other. Okay. And so I, I showed you earlier the, the cloth that I'm going to use. It's this cheesecloth here. Okay, you can see it's very thin. It's made in, of cotton. And that's one thing that I wanted to emphasize is cotton is a really good place to start. It's a really common material. Um, it usually holds on to uh, especially natural dyes a little bit more easier than synthetics. Um, so I know I mentioned before that synthetics can be used if that's all you have. Um, that's okay. Um, but uh, if you really, if you can, really try to start with co uh, cotton, at least for one of your, um, uh, at least for, for, for your experiment. Um, and I mean, you know, if you wanted to test uh, different types of cloth, so, uh, so cotton as opposed to silk, um, you could do that as well. But I think it's really good to include cotton in these experiments because they can really show you um, how a natural dye um, is adhering to or the, the effectiveness of that on a um, natural material. Okay, So um, here, so I've, I've cut these into approximately uh, 10 by 10 squares and I've, I've made four, you guys only need two. Okay, And so uh, as I get later in my procedure, I will add these to um, these containers where I will pour the dye bath. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, by the way, so I just have this towel here. Um, I, there's nothing contraband or anything behind this towel. It's just because I didn't want any distractions from um, what I was trying to show you with the ingredients. <laughs> okay. So let me get this stuff ready. So I've added uh, approximately a liter um, to uh, each of these pots, and now I will boil them. Add each of the in ingredients. So here is the dye bath I'm going to create for the turmeric. Okay, so that's a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Okay, just putting it the pot and stirring it. You may be able to see already that it's yellow in color. Now these are beginning to heat up. I'm going to keep stirring. You can see the color becoming a little bit more bright and rich. So now I'll set my timer for five minutes. There goes my five minute timer. I'm going to turn off the heat. Using electric, I'll take them off the heat. I'll let them cool a little bit before I pour them. Okay, so now I have all of my um, all of my uh, containers ready and labeled, and ready for my dye bath. And I have the two examples here with treatment. Um, this is turmeric with the baking soda and this is tea with the vinegar. And I've already added, so as you can see I've added the cloth to each of these, the cotton cheesecloth, and I have added the, um, the whatever material I'm using, the um, in this case the baking soda, and in this case the vinegar 
to the modification part of the dye bath. So in the meantime, I just wanted to um, draw your attention to uh, these uh, setups that I have for the dye baths. Um, so remember, half will be going into one and half will be going into the other. The first half is just the standard procedure and then the second half is the uh, modification that you're implementing in your dye bath experiment. So um, here you can see for my experiments, I've labeled turmeric, okay, so that's just turmeric, and then the other container I've labeled it turmeric plus baking soda. And um, according to the protocol that's in the, um, in the lab exercise, I added a tablespoon of baking powder um, to this container here. Um, for the tea, as you can see, this, is, uh, this container is for um, the pure tea uh, dye bath, um, and then this is for the other half of the dye bath with vinegar, uh, white vinegar added. Um, and as I showed you before, um, this is with the addition of a tablespoon of white vinegar. Okay, so as you can see, I have poured the cooled uh, dye baths into each container. You can see the dark color of the tea here and the yellow color of the turmeric here. Um, and the main thing I just wanted to say is, first of all, just make sure that the um, dye bath is cool enough to pour that you feel comfortable pouring it. And then just one thing I wanted to mention is if your experiment requires that you use actual plant material that you'll have to put in a blender, you can consider using a sieve like this and placing it over the uh, jar or container and pouring from there. Um, you might also want to consider if you are using cheesecloth or something similar, you could actually reserve a piece of that and put it in here to help strain it further uh, so you don't get little pieces of plant material in there. Uh, it's important to try to not get those pieces just because when they sit here uh, in this dye bath for some period of time, they can actually start to break down um, and actually become a little smelly, <laughs> especially the red cabbage. Um, so that's just something you might want to think about um, if you're using the plant materials. But, um, you know, not to uh, disparage you from using red cabbage, it's actually a very cool experiment if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, but just a little, uh, little bit of a tip there just to help you um, plan for setting up the dye baths. As you can see, each of these is roughly divided in half. So I had my pot of uh, dye bath that was, uh, you know, that I cooked on the stove, and then I divided it roughly in half. Does the volume need to be exactly the same? No, that is, there's no problem with that if you're slightly off. In fact, I spilled some of mine while I was pouring okay because some of the liquid came down this way like that that's absolutely fine don't worry so much about the volume because the volume is not what it's important what's important is that you have your uh, material that you're working with the cloth that you're working with actually immersed and covered by the dye bath for the period that you're testing for the standard procedure suggests 24 hours um, and so that's what I'm doing here. Although if you wanted to use time as your variable, you could take one out earlier. Um, so that's, you know, if I wanted to test this, uh, if I kept the dye bath exactly the same for the tea, I hadn't added the vinegar, um, and said it was tea and tea, I could use time as a variable and uh, take um, this one out at uh, 12 hours. Um, or similarly, I could keep this, uh, this one for the 24 hours as a control, or I could keep this twice the amount of time at 48 hours. So it's really up to you. Um, but like I said, it's the volume, the, the volume is not as important. It's just making sure that the material is covered, um, and that you are, um, that you're able to, 
uh, sea that is completely immersed in the dye bath. All right, and so now you just wait for your results. Okay, very exciting to see what will happen in these 24 hours. Finally, in the meantime, while you're waiting, uh, for you can cover your, um, your dye bath containers with a paper towel. Uh, I use a rubber band because that helps keep it in place, but if you're only able to use a cloth or, um, or just fold a paper towel on top, um, just do what you can. Uh, it usually works better this way just to make sure that nothing falls inside. Um, so in between the times that you are stirring your dye bath uh, at those intervals that you decided on, uh, you can keep these dye baths covered. All right, so just as safety is part of your rubric, um, so is cleanup. So I'm not going to ask you to show that you uh, cleaned up after your lab um, and not do it myself. So I just wanted to show you um, that my workspace is clean. Okay, so that's the stove where the pots were, right? Everything has been put away, wiped up. And then you can see behind me, uh, I have washed the pots. Uh, and also wash the vessel that I use to measure the dye baths uh, and then any other things I have placed in the dishwasher. Okay, so my dye baths have, um, have been sitting for at least 24 hours and uh, now you can actually see there are some differences in the color of the dye bath. So this is just the turmeric by itself. The turmeric and baking soda, which you see is a slightly more reddish color. Um, and then we have the tea by itself and then tea uh, with an acidified uh, solution uh, using white vinegar. Uh, and you can see there's a slight cloudiness to that, um, to that dye bath. And so uh, I'm going to uh, go through the rinsing procedure right now. And uh, we'll see if there's any um, major differences in the appearance of the cloth. Okay, so now before rinsing these out, I am going to take some pictures of the dye baths so I can record that as data um, to help me when I'm drawing my conclusions for the experiment. Now I'm going to rinse out each of the uh, cloths that are in the dye bath. Uh, and so I just thought you might want to um, have some gloves if, if you have them available. Uh, if not, it's no big deal because you should be working with some non-toxic uh, materials. It's just so that um, the dye bath doesn't stain your hands. But if you're careful, um, you should be okay. But they don't have to be nitrile gloves like these. They can actually be um, the plastic kitchen gloves that you have uh, that you can buy at the store. Um, so those those should be absolutely fine. Um, and then some wa wax paper that you can just lay down on the counter with some paper towels on top um, to put your uh, pieces of material that are from the dye bath uh, out to dry. So now that I've taken some pictures of the um, freshly dyed cloth, um, I've just laid them out to dry on these paper towels. Uh, I've removed the labels from the jars just so I can put them next to the dyed samples. Uh, and you can already see some differences between the two different treatments for each of the types of dye bath. Um, but now uh, we're going to wait and see what happens when these dry out. Okay, and finally, to be consistent, I've also uh, washed my uh, jars that I put the dye bath in with soap um, and set them out to dry. And of course, you're welcome to, um, if you have one, um, put them in a dishwasher as well. That's totally up to you, but I just wanted to keep it consistent um, and show you that um, I've cleaned up for this part of the lab. Okay, so I've left my cloth overnight, and um, now you can see the results.
there are some subtle differences between the tea using a standard procedure and the tea using vinegar. Now let's turn our attention to the turmeric. Here is the cotton cloth uh, dyed with the uh, turmeric dyed bath using the standard procedure. And then here is the one where um, I added baking soda. And you can see this slight red tone to the, um, uh, to the cloth, but it's in different places. It's not very even. Um, and so uh, there might be something going on there as, um, as far as a reaction goes. So um, one thing I read... Uh, so I guess what I can conclude from this is that the reaction basically worked, that uh, adding baking soda um, to this turmeric dye bath did possibly change the pH, um, and <clears throat> this change in pH resulted in this change in color from yellow to red. So the question now is, what can we conclude from the results? All right, so we have the turmeric dyed with a standard procedure, and the turmeric uh, dyed with baking soda added. You can see that this one is much more reddish than this one. Um, so what does that mean? It means that the information that I came across and that, had, um, that I had experienced myself uh, is at least somewhat true that a cloth can be, um, or that turmeric um, <laughs> changes color with pH, changing from yellow to red in alkaline conditions. However, you can see that the, the dyeing is a little uneven, all right? So that may just be because of the cloth being in the dye bath. Um, but I also came across that this reaction from, uh, of curcumin, <clears throat> the material that makes turmeric yellow, um, that that reaction is at least partially reversible. Um, so is that what happened here, or was it just that the cloth was crumbled up? Um, this is something that, um, that I would like to investigate further, is could we put this in neutral uh, conditions, or um, uh, could we put them put this in acidic conditions and reverse this reaction and make it turn from uh, red to yellow. Okay, so, um, you know, or is this dye permanent or at least semi-permanent? Um, that's something that I would like to explore further. And for the tea, you might be able to see a subtle difference in the, um, the two fabrics. Here is the, the, um, the cloth, the, co the cotton cheesecloth dyed with um, the tea with a standard procedure. And this is um, the same procedure, but using um, acidic conditions by adding uh, vinegar. Um, so um, what I can conclude from this is maybe the vinegar was acting as a fixative here, where this where the tea, when it acted as a dye, adhered or stuck better to the condition where um, vinegar was added as opposed to the standard procedure. What would I like to do next? Um, I want to see if it really was acting as a fixative. So I might try exposing these two pieces of cloth to sunlight for the same amount of time and see whether they both fade in the same manner, um, so they both lighten in the same manner, or if this one maintains its color better than this one, um, then I can see whether or not this is actually acting as a fixative. Um, another method would be um, to, to wash each of these um, under the same conditions and see whether uh, fading occurs as well. So those are two different options. And then finally, one thing that I wanted to mention is in this experiment, um, for a procedural just improvement, not necessarily a conceptual um, 
you know, a conceptual follow-up question, but a procedural improvement would be that um, if I had pH paper or pH strips to actually measure and specify the pH, um, the pH change between each of these um, different conditions for both experiments, I think would have been helpful. Um, so uh, those are my, um, my results. Um, what I can conclude maybe from the results uh, and also what I would do to follow up. You just set up your experiment, you uh, did it safely, you cleaned up, and soon you'll be able to collect your results. I just wanted to emphasize to you that this video that I'm doing here is a tutorial. It is uh, meant to be instructional for this particular lab because there are certain elements that you need to include and certain things I wanted to guide you about just so that you feel comfortable while you're doing this lab or if you've already done the lab to uh, go back uh, and uh, see if there's something else that you need to include um, or something that you can focus on in your uh, video recordings. Um, so that being said, uh, I just wanted to emphasize that your video does not need to be this long. All right, so just remember that you just need to include the elements that are in the rubric. Um, you'll want to include the information and the uh, and show that you're doing the experiment safely. You have your safety kit nearby. Um, at the end of the lab, you want to make sure that you uh, have cleaned up your workspace. Um, and then you want to show certain important parts of the procedure. Things are crucial for the, um, me the methodology of the experiment that you're doing. So in this case, for the dye project, I, after brief briefly showing the materials, I, um, I showed that I was cooking the dye bath, um, showed how it was cooking, how it was uh, bubbling and moving along, um, what I did afterwards uh, when I just left it to cool. Uh, I showed you how um, I had labeled the containers uh, and also uh, after I poured the dye bath, uh, what it looked like uh, and um, where to proceed from there, uh, how long to wait, and um, you know, for example, um, you know, covering them up and all that stuff. So yours can be even more brief than that. Um, just showing those crucial steps, um, for example, um, the materials, the cooking, um, and then the placement into uh, the, the two con containers that you've reserved, um, and also just making a distinction between the standard procedure and the modification that you're doing. Um, that's it. Uh, that's really what you need. Uh, all this extra information is what I've added, uh, again, to help you feel comfortable with the procedure. Um, I also want to emphasize that it's not going to be perfect. I made mistakes today. Um, one thing I noticed while I was making the turmeric dye bath is it turned red in color. So I realized that there may have been some um, something in the tap water that I used that was already changing at that color. So I actually prepared my turmeric dye bath again. Um, and so, you know, a full disclosure, you know, I, I just, I, I felt that was the best thing to do, so I did it. Um, and I'm telling you this now. And, um, you know, I also, as I mentioned, I, I spilled some of the, the dye bath uh, accidentally while I, was, uh, while I was pouring it, and not all of it went into the container. Again, because volume isn't important, that was no big deal. Um, but remember, it's, it's not going to be perfect. Um, you know, don't be frustrated. It's just uh, part of the process. Um, so, you know, when people look at scientists, they say, oh, you know, there are these people in these working in a lab, they're wearing a lab coat, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, they might be so good at their job or whatever, but um, scientists make mistakes too. It's just not something that you see because if you should see the successes uh, of science and not necessarily the many, 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 many failures along the way. Um, so in saying that, I just want you to know that, you know, if, if there's something that you came across during this procedure that you didn't, you didn't anticipate or all of a sudden you're like, I didn't think about that um, and I really, I really should have done this, um, you know, or, or done it differently, that's okay. Uh, that's something that 
that you you can and should include in your video um, be because it's it's okay to make mistakes or it's okay to realize something later um, but as long as you're showing these different elements um, uh, like the safety and cleanup that I mentioned before. Um, the other part of the rubric is being visible in your video, um, you know, showing that, uh, that you're, you're present and, um, you know, that you're involved in uh, creating um, this, this video content. Uh, and then, of course, showing the procedure um, and what you do um, to accomplish the results, so that link between procedure and results. And then finally, showing your results, all right? So that's for this lab, it's going to be, you know, what, what does this cloth look like after we're finished um, with this 24 hours um, or whatever you choose for the time uh, in the dye bath? And then what can you conclude from that? Um, what does that mean to you? Um, sometimes for some results, you might be confused. You might not know what it means, um, but that's okay. Uh, you, you can say that. And um, if that's how you feel, you should say that. Um, but uh, for this lab, I think it's pretty straightforward. And you can just, you know, say, oh, this, this looks like this, uh, and this looks different. Or they look the same. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that you could say. And then basically, um, what you can conclude for that from that. Okay, so these pieces of cloth look exactly the same to me and um, I, so I think the variable that I changed uh, the modification that I made had no effect that's perfectly fine to say that um, because that's what happened uh, you're really just reporting um, reporting the results and then drawing a conclusion for, from it okay so uh, that's perfectly fine um, and then you you might want to say what you would do next um, so I, I did this experiment uh, and you know now I want to test this okay so that's all of the, the things that you should be doing um, and like I said you know it's not gonna be perfect things aren't gonna go perfectly uh, they don't in the lab <laughs> so if we were all together as a class in the lab uh, things wouldn't go perfectly uh, students would make mistakes sometimes I make mistakes uh, and so you know you just have to sometimes make uh, adjustments as you go along um, and also be sure to, if you have um, made some sort of adjustment to the materials or the procedure because you weren't able to um, acquire uh, and get that uh, equipment or materials, just say that and say it uh, and indicate the modification that you made. Um, that's, that's perfectly fine to, uh, for you to do that. Um, it's just no excuse to say, oh, I didn't do the experiment because I, I couldn't, because that, that shows me that you didn't try. Um, but if you try and get the materials that you need, even if you have to improvise, that's, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so these are just some things to remember. And um, I hope that in doing this, um, you know, maybe, maybe you feel you felt a little stressed out in doing this and not knowing what to expect. Um, but I hope this shows you that, um, you know, you, you can be at ease uh, as long as you um, meet the requirements that are outlined in the rubric, um, uh, I think you'll be fine. Um, but just remember that this is a process and what you're doing here is great um, and that I really appreciate um, all of your effort uh, in the course and that uh, I'm, I'm really inspired by all of you. Uh, and you know the fact that you can do this uh, I think is wonderful. Um, and that I hope that in doing this, even though it's, it's not maybe remotely related to what you want to do in life, um, that you, know, you, you don't really want much to do with science um, once you meet your career goals, um, that you can sort of look back on this and say, oh, you know, that was the time when I was, uh, you know, I, I felt kind of like a scientist. Um, and of course, if you want to, if you wish to go into the science field in the future, um, I hope this also helps you feel a little bit like um, like a scientist, uh, and albeit in your own space, um, in your um, independent approach. Okay, thanks, guys.